Productive, creative, and positive greetings to you all. This is Sherelle J with another After Effects tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be making a tie-dye inspired project done entirely in After Effects with no third-party plugins. This is going to be a lot of fun, guys, so stay tuned. So to begin with, let's do a new composition at 1280 by 720 and then create a new solid. Uh, the color of that solid doesn't matter for me. I chose a teal because that would be the background of my base layer. From there, I'm going to create a new shape layer and I'm going to make sure to it that there's no fill. But we're going to do uh, an ellipse with a thick about 21 pixel stroke and we're going to have the gradient as well. Uh, for me, I chose multiple colors in the gradient and make sure that there was a bit of contrast and vibrancy. So pick whatever colors you like. This is your personal project. From there, we're going to create our ellipse in the center of our composition. And we're going to call this layer, we can rename it the twirl one layer. Uh, from there, add a repeater. The repeater is the key to this project because we're working with multiple layers to create multiple contrasting shapes. Uh, we're going to adjust the position initially so that everything is kind of stacked on top of each other. And from there, we're going to adjust the scale and the number of copies. So what I'm doing at this next stage is adjusting the copies as well as the start point of the gradient the scale. Um, you'll see me next adjust the start and end points of the gradient. And my intent on this is to make sure to it that all of the colors that we chose previously are reflected in each of our circles. Um, I want it to look vibrant. I want there to be a contrast of light and dark colors. So I'm going to adjust these settings. This is in a, a precise science. This is where your own creativity and spatial reasoning is going to have to come into play but i'm trying to get that light refracted in each of the circles so that we have a vibrant and contrasting tie-dye pattern towards the end so our next step is actually going to be to add a zigzag and we're going to go up to add and scroll down to zigzag and we're going to drag this effect down below our repeater and our intent, I'll give you a hint, our intent overall is to make this kind of look like Sonic the Hedgehog. We want a twirl with spikes. So in order to do that, we're going to have to play with the size as well as the ridges per segment until we get something that looks like this. Uh, we're also going to have to adjust the transform, uh, the rotation of the transform repeater. And as you can see, once we play with the scale as well as the rotation and the size and the ridges, we get something that looks like this. Now what I've found is by adjusting the start point and end point of our gradient as well, what we can start to do is get a distribution of the colors along each tier of the spikes. And that's the best way for this to work. We want all of the colors to be evenly distributed. And once we have that even distribution and look we want, we're going to copy that twirl layer and we're going to delete the zigzag effect that we added on earlier. Um, and once we do that, we're going to go into the mode and set it to a hard light mode. going to do it again we're going to copy our twirl layer one more time this is our third twirl layer and we're just going to adjust the opacity on this one and that's going to give us that blurred effect that we want later on so next we're going to go up and create a adjustment layer and create a blur on top of that adjustment layer so we're going to rename this layer the blur layer and of course go to effects and presets and get a radial blur. Now to make this pop, we're really gonna go into our radial blur layer and go into the type setting and choose zoom. And from there, we're gonna adjust the amount to something over 50%. In this instance, I chose 63. 
Now, what I didn't do at the beginning, which you could do is animate our twirl one layer. So we're gonna do that now. Once again, once you feel comfortable with this project, you can do it yourself at the beginning. But we're gonna go into our transform and animate the rotation first by going to the beginning of the timeline and adding a keyframe and then adding one rotation and then adding a keystroke at the end of that timeline. And we're gonna do that for each of our twirl layers. And the intent on this is for everything to rotate together. So I'm content with the animation as well as the overall makeup of my twirls. However, it doesn't look like a t-shirt. So in order to do that, what I did was I went to Google Images and found a fabric. And I took that fabric layer, that JPEG image of fabric, imported it into After Effects. And then what I'm gonna do is drag that down above my twirl layers. I made sure my image had a lot of contrast to it so that when I set it to, as you can see, I set the mode to soft light it really starts to look like a t-shirt. So next we're going to add a new adjustment layer and then we're going to go into effects and presets and look for the vibrance effect. We're gonna add that to our adjustment layer and increase our settings so that we have a highly saturated and vibrant look to our twirl layers. Now, what I'm gonna show you next is how we can get a variation of this look with less steps. And I wanna show you how you can use the curves layer to really bump up the color. So I'm gonna show you how to do a variation on that and we're gonna do the exact same thing I showed you previously, except this time, uh, after we delete that zigzag on our second twirl layer, Instead of actually making an additional twirl layer, or twirl layer three, we're gonna just set that second twirl layer to soft light, and then we're gonna go right into our adjustment layer and our radial blur. And we're gonna do it a little differently this time. So the settings previously were set to zoom and 63%, but as you can see, we're gonna leave it on spin and we're gonna adjust the amount to about 57 this time so that we get a more spirally look. And that way, when we set our t-shirt layer to soft light, we get something a little softer, or almost watercolor or airbrush look with our tie-dye. Or if we set it back to zoom and adjust the amount, we can have a, a more intense and rugged spiked look to our tie-dye pattern. Now, as you'll recall previously, uh, we wanted to really bump up the saturation and the intensity of the color to make it look more tropical. We're gonna do that again. Uh, this time what I'm gonna do is when I add that adjustment layer and add that vibrance, I'm gonna increase the saturation and, and the vibrance and then go back in to our effects and presets and go into curves and individually adjust the channels, the RGB channels, the red, the greens, the blues, the lights, the darks, to really, really intensify that color and make it look psychedelic. And with that, we have an animated and vibrant tie-dye pattern. I wanna thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Uh, I have other pattern tutorials on my channel if you want to take a look there. Also, I really love when you guys tag me in your posts and in your projects and let me see your variations on some of the patterns and projects that I create. In addition, this particular project was very special because someone reached out to me personally and asked for me to help them out because they were having difficulty creating a tie-dye pattern or tie-dye effect. So if there's a project or effect that you've been having difficulty with, uh, give me a shout out. I'll see if I can give it a try and put a tutorial together for you. I wanna thank you once again for watching and as always, stay creative.